Assalamualaikum everyone again. Um, on, be, on behalf of the AFF of Trinidad with the Al Faisalia Foundation, uh, also co sponsor BIC, Barbara Islamic Center, uh, also Moshid Al Nur, uh, Londonville, and also the Abdul Aziz Trust. Uh, these are some of the co sponsors for the different programs that we have throughout the country. Uh, with our Sheikh, His Eminence Sheikh Faisal Hamdi Razak from Canada. Um, the AFF is based on the uh, Quranic teachings and the Sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is to improve each and every one of us to strengthen us spiritually and physically to return back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And inshallah, today, uh, this evening, you all will be enticed with the message of our dear Sheikh, His Eminence Sheikh Faisal Razak from Canada, which this topic is based on the, the fake of transitions of the, in the Muslim society, inshallah. So before we move on to our Sheikh, um, we have uh, opening dua for the Imam Judaya from the uh, Beast Masjid will make the opening dua for us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Dua. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم أنت السلام منك السلام تبارك هذا الجلال والإكرام صلى الله على النبي لمي وآلي صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على هبي بك خير الخلق كلهم يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا غفو يا غفار يا لطيف يا الله we ask of you يا رب العالمين to forgive us our big sins our small sins our major sins our minor sins and the sins that we are aware of and the sins that we are not aware of يا الله we ask of you to bless us with your infinite mercy يا رب العالمين and make us merciful at heart يا رب العالمين we ask of you to guide us on the path of us the right and the right يا الله we ask of you يا الله to make tonight a blessed night يا الله a night of learning in Medina, Ya Allah, from our dear Sheikh, Sheikh Faisal, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask of you, Ya Rabbul Alameen, to bless us with in Medina. Ya Allah, we ask of you, Allah, to forgive us for our shortcomings and guide us. So when we die, we die with La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and our tongues. Ya Allah, when we raise on the day of your Qiyamah, make us amongst those people who are granted your shade, Ya Allah. O Allah, we ask of you to bless us with the grand intercession of beloved Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that day. And help us to cause us your lightning speed and enter into your paradise. Balag alullah bi kamalihi, kashafat tuja bi jamalihi, has sunat jamil qisalihi, sallu alayhi wa alihi, ameen ya rabbul alameen. Shukran, O the Imam, Imam Judah. Now, uh, for the procedure, we have a chronic recitation by a young Hafiz to be, Hafiz Ismail, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Yaseem. والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون 
وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّمَا تُنذِرُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَ وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ وَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ اثْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثٍ فَقَالُوا فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ قَالُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا وَمَا أَنْزَلَ الرَّحْمَنُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا تَكْذِبُونَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا يَعْلَمُ إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ لَمُرْسَلُونَ وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا تَطَيَّرْنَا بِكُمْ لَإِنْ لَمْ تَنْتَهُوا لَنَرْجُمَنَّكُمْ وَلَيَمَسَّنَّكُمْ مِنَّا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ قَالُوا طَائِرُكُمْ مَعَكُمْ أَنْ ذُكِّرْتُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ اتَّبِعُوا مَنْ لَا يَسْأَلُكُمْ أَجْرًا وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ وَمَا لِيَ لَا عَبُدُ الَّذِي فَطَرَنِي وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ أَأَتَّخِذُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ آلِهَةً إِنْ يُرِدْنِ الرَّحْمَنُ بِضُرٍ لَا تُغْنِ عَنِّي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُنْقِذُونَ إِنِّي إِذَا لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُّبِينٍ إِنِّي آمَنْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ فَاسْمَعُونَ قِيلَ دُخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون 
يَشْكُرُونَ لِيَأْكُلُوا مِنْ ثَمَرِهِ وَمَا عَمِلَتْهُ أَيْدِيهِمْ أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَزْوَاجَ كُلَّهَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضُ وَمِنْ أَنْفُسِهِمْ وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجر القديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون اصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم 
أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبخوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دونه واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم This is name is Sidi Mustafa he um, he's from the Java uh, community he's from Pramabo uh, he has Indonesian roots so uh, now call to the See Mustafa to render short passage of us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salatu wa salamu alayka, ya Sayyidi, ya Rasulallah, ya Rasulallah, wa salam alayka. يا سيدي يا حبيب الله يا حبيب الله اخو كاتارا نام محمد دل کا اجالا نام محمد بولو اخو كاتارا نام محمد دل کا اجالا نام محمد کلمہ ہمارا ہے سب سے پیارا کلمہ ہمارا ہے سب سے پیارا اس میں لکھا ہے نام محمد اس میں لکھا ہے نام محمد بولو 
आखो का तारा नाम मोहम्मद दिल का उजाला नाम मोहम्मद दौलत जो चाहो दोनों जहा की दौलत जो चाहो दोनों जहा की कर लो वजीफा नाम मोहम्मद कर लो वजीफा नाम मोहम्मद बोलो आखो का तारा नाम मोहम्मद दिल का उजाला नाम मोहम्मद नूह हली लो ईसा ओ मूसा नूह हली लो ईसा ओ मूसा सबके हे आका नाम मोहम्मद सबके हे आका नाम मोहम्मद बोलो आखो का तारा नाम मोहम्मद दिल का उजाला नाम मोहम्मद असला तो असलम का या सैदी या रसूल या रसूल वसलम का या हबीब या हबीब शुक्रिया जजाक स्पेशल थैंक्स फॉर दे मुरीद फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम Suriname for that beautiful rendition of uh, given praises and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salutation of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inshallah to move on to the program I'd just like to do a short introduction for our Sayyidina Shaykh Faisal ibn Razak uh, Sayyidina Shaykh Faisal Razak Hafizullah he is the leader and founder of the and president and spiritual leader of the Islamic Forum of Canada for over 50 years He also founded the Al Faisalia Foundation, the AFF Spiritual Movement, in many countries: uh, North America, South America, the Caribbean, and other parts of the world. Uh, Sayyid Al Sheikh Sheikh Faisal Bin Razak is also a prophetic writer with many books, and also he has uh, many prominent scholars that he is taking his knowledge from. And one of his uh, prominent scholars that he's taken his knowledge from is a renowned scholar also of the entire the world is a uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al Yaqubi Al Ibrahim Al Hassani Hafizullah, who is his teacher also and also a grand teacher. I now ask to come to the podium, Sayyidina Sheikh Faisal Hamdi Razak Hafizullah. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتع علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين ونفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم عزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected beloved brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu may the peace and blessings of almighty allah be with each and every one of you and 
Also, we are still in the month of Shawwal, uh, so I want to wish each and every one of you Eid Mubarak, uh, special greetings of Eid in this month of Eid, the month of Shawwal. And uh, it is the sunnah of uh, many parts of the ummah uh, to celebrate Eid uh, throughout the month of Shawwal, not only one day or two days, but to celebrate Eid throughout the month of Shawwal. And it's something that I uh, recommend as Muslims we do, uh, because uh, Eid al-Fitr is a great occasion and uh, to commemorate it with your family members, your relatives, your friends, other Muslims of the community, it's, it's a good thing. And uh, so each one of you should continue your celebrations of Eid, uh, inviting your loved ones to your homes and have uh, dinner with them uh, on weekends and so on throughout this period of time. I know I... I visited places like Malaysia, Indonesia, where lecture tours in the past, and it's amazing what they do for Eid. Uh, there's much commemoration uh, throughout the month of Shawwal. Every day there's some Eid gathering somewhere that you can go and enjoy in a halal way. Uh, so this coming together of the believers is one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do and the Prophet sallallahu wants us to do. Uh, believers coming together. You look at how our deen is and it's, much of it is based on this concept of mudawama, uh, to help one another, to do good deeds. And by us coming together, we do that. We do that. Uh, so, you look at the, the, the sunnah that was established by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, from the beginning of your life, there's uh, gatherings coming together to thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for His blessings. When a baby is born, the, the start of the journey of that baby, baby's life in this dunya, uh, we have akika, we have gatherings of the family and so on to celebrate that. Uh, marriage, nikah, uh, we come together for that. So many things, birthdays, anniversaries, and even when we leave the dunya, uh, others come together to pray janaza, to bury us. Uh, so the coming together of believers, it's something that the Prophet ﷺ desired for us to do. And so in Medina, he would actively participate and encourage the Sahabas to do likewise. You know, on every occasion in Medina after the Hijra, when any of the Sahabiyat gave birth to babies, the Prophet Ali would celebrate that, would come and read. He himself would distribute halawiyat, uh, sweets. Uh, to the Muslims in Medina to celebrate that the birth of a baby and their wedding uh, he directed the ummah to this concept of walima so you have the nikah which is the actual marriage but then uh, he established the concept of walima a gathering of uh, the Muslim community to announce this nikah. And this is one of the conditions and requirements and shuruh of nikah. That it must be announced publicly. If a nikah is done privately, it's not valid. It must be witnessed by at least two persons and announced in the public. So when people see these two individuals together, they would know that it's husband and wife. But if people don't know that they are married, then all kinds of thoughts would come to the minds of people and so on. So that's the wisdom behind the public announcement of marriage and nikah. So coming together has great blessings. And what, what you're doing tonight by coming to this function, 
falls under that umbrella. The, and the Sahabas had a wonderful practice that when they would gather together, come together before they leave, while they're leaving and so on, they would uh, recite or remind others present of Surat al-Asr. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ So this tawasaw, وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ This tawasaw implies coming together, being together, working together, encouraging one another in our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tonight, I want to talk about a relatively new uh, Islamic science. It's called Fiqh at Tahawulat, the Fiqh of Transitions in Muslim societies, and uh, to mention spirit, some spiritual implications for Muslims in the West. Um, let, me, let me see by show of hands how many of you know what is fiqh at tahawulat if you can describe for me what is fiqh at tahawulat fiqh of transitions raise your hands and let me share it with me inshallah anyone okay so that's not unusual um, because it is a it's a new science of islam the traditional scholars centuries ago, they never taught, uh, wrote about this. Never wrote about this. Uh, but it is very important for us to understand because it would help us to charter our course in life. And especially today with the challenges that we are faced with. What it is is this fic of transition it is looking at society and the changes that occur in society uh, at two levels one it's at the level of the cosmos uh, meaning the physical environment and the second category at the level of human society what are the transitions that take place? What are the rules governing this? How do we respond? And how do we protect ourselves from these challenges? That body of knowledge taken from the Quran and from the Hadith, that is what constitutes fiqh at tahawulat the fiqh of transitions. There are uh, some things which are fixed in society, in the cosmos as well, and some things which change. And the change now, the realities of changes in society is what this science of Islam, Tahawulat, deals with. And so I, I want to talk something about that today. Um, I'll mention some of the things I talked about last night uh, in California at the Abdulaziz Trust. Um, and then I'll mention some new things tonight. So this is... It would, it's of benefit for those of you who attended the lecture last night, and it's also a standalone standard lecture for others, most of you who did not attend, to understand this concept, inshallah. Uh, so, continue. Continue. Okay. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned uh, these changes. What are the transition, what are the changes in society? Before his time, during his time, and in future. 
And a lot of it he mentioned, and including the revelation in Quran, he mentioned after the mirage. After he went for the mirage and came back, then he started to talk about a lot of things that will happen in the future. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that knowledge. That's one of the uh, blessings he received on the Miraj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him knowledge of creation. So he knew everything that would happen in the future. And he talked about this. And the Quran also mentioned many of these things that will happen in the future in, in terms of chronological sequence once again after the Miraj. The Quran mentioned many things that will happen in the future. And before then, are stories of previous nations. So, the Prophet ﷺ told us through the hadith and then Allah subhanahu wa revealed in the Quran about stories of previous nations. Can someone tell me, give me an example of one of those previous nations that the Quran talks about and the Prophet mentioned? Anyone? Yes? Prophet Adam alayhi salam, right? The Quran mentioned about this. Prophet also mentioned many things about Adam alayhi salam. Who else? Ad. Ad and Thamud also, yes. Uh, people did not know about them. Uh, the Prophet also mentioned uh, details of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran about the story of Ad and Thamud and so on. Any other example? Yes? Huh? Uh, the people at the time of uh, Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam, which is of great relevance to us today because of the transitions you see in society. Uh, Prophet Musa salam, and Fir'aun. So these are accounts of previous nations and what they did and what happened to them. What they did and what happened to them. So the lesson to be learned is important because the law that's established is that if you do the same thing that those people did, you will get the same punishment. Right. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is informing us about these different nations and what they did and how they were destroyed because of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the were powerful but they were destroyed individuals or nations one of the most powerful person that humanity has ever seen in its history is Pharaoh it was so powerful in the time of Musa alayhi salam Nimrud in the time of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam these were powerful people Pharaoh actually said, Ana rabbukum ala. I'm your Lord, I'm your God. That's what he said. And he would prove that he is God by saying or claiming that he can give life or take life because he's God. And in that flawed logic, he, he would demonstrate bring two slaves and says you I order that you be killed and his soldiers would kill that person he says you I order that you be freed and they free him that, that slave and he would use this to claim that he is God 
but it's not reality. Uh, so the stories of the nations before and then during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he talked about things that is going to happen, you see it. You know, he mentioned about uh, the Roman Empire. He, Allah SWT revealed in the Quran and the Prophet conveyed that uh, to the community then, the Sahabas, the Muslims, and the Quraysh as well. And he says that Rome will be destroyed. And people cannot, could not believe that because Rome was the superpower of that time. And he's saying this and, you know, the Quraysh scoff at that, cynical, saying that who are you to say Rome will be defeated? That's the superpower. But then he also told them, give them a timeline, fi bidah sinin, which in the Arabic language means uh, from three to seven years. So he's giving them a timeline of when this great empire will be defeated. And he's also telling them that where, which is a place that they will be defeated, fi adnal ard, like this. And it happened. Right in their lifetime, the people saw it. That is great. Superpowers uh, destroyed. Then th th there is a time uh, in, this, in the life of the Prophet, a particular year uh, called the year of deputations, that he would send invitation to different people to accept Islam. Or powerful people. This is Dawa now. Dawa, the essential first step of the believer the prophet did it and then this is what he told all the sahabas to do to invite people to Allah invite people to Islam and he sent his messengers with a letter of invitation so one of the letters was to the emperor of Persia which is now Iran and when he sent, uh, when the messenger went to the emperor of Persia and told him, uh, the, the messenger of Allah sent, uh, sent this letter to you. Now, Persia was the second superpower at that time. There were two superpowers, the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire. So here it is, this seemingly weak, low person in Mecca and then Medina now after Hijra is inviting the head of the superpower to accept Islam. And the emperor took the letter and ripped it apart. He was arrogant. Uh, in this way, he ripped the letter apart. And then the messenger, the Sahaba, went back to Medina, tell the Prophet And the Prophet says, Mazzakallahu mulkahu. Allah will literally mash to pieces his kingdom. And in a few years, it happened. It happened. The Persian Empire was defeated and never regained its leadership since that day until now. So the Prophet is telling us things that will happen in his time. And then he mentioned about things that will happen in the future. Things that will happen in the future. And the basis of this among the, in, uh, in the Quran it's this concept is mentioned in Surah Al-Jum'ah. Surah Al-Jum'ah. Who will the ba'ath of the ummiyeen of Rasulullah minhum. Uh, where there are several 
responsibilities and duties that are assigned to the Prophet ﷺ, what he do. And then in uh, a beautiful hadith, which is referred to as the foundation of the deen, and which you, inshallah, you all know, but I'll just summarize it. Uh, this hadith, reported by Imam Muslim and other colleagues of a hadith, narrated by Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. Uh, he said that they were with the Prophet Sallallahu in Medina, uh, a group of them sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu and then a strange man came in their midst. And he went and sat down next to the Prophet Sallallahu and uh, they could not recognize him, this strange man. But his hair was exceedingly black, his clothes was exceedingly white, and so on. And he, they could not notice any signs of travel on him. So it, it caught their attention because in Medina, a small community, then everyone know everyone else. You know, so if a, a, a person came from outside, everyone recognizes that's a strange person, you're not from Medina, and so on, right? So, but if he was visiting Medina, he had to travel through the desert to get to Medina. And you see signs of travel on him, dust and so on. But he was immaculately dressed. Uh, he sat down next to the Prophet and he started to ask the Prophet questions. And all of this is amazing to Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab and the few sahabs that are there witnessing this event. See, uh, this man asked the Prophet, Akhbirni an al-Islam, tell me what is Islam. And the Prophet Ali Islam mentioned the five pillars of Islam. And then a person said, Sadaqta, you've answered correctly. So they're more amazed now. Uh, because this person is asking, the Prophet a question on and telling him the answer correctly. Because they wouldn't do that. They would usually say, Allahu wa Rasuluhu alam. Allah is messenger knows best mm, in that way. And then the, the, the person asks the second question, Akhbirni anil iman. Tell me what is iman, what is faith. And the Prophet also mentioned the articles of faith. The person said, Sadaqta, you answer correctly. Uh, the person asked, Akhbirni anil ihsan. Tell me what is ihsan. And the Prophet said, And ta'bud Allah ka anaka tarahu fa in lam takun tarahu fa in hu yaraka. To worship Allah as if you can see Him. And if you cannot see Him, you must know that He sees you. Ihsan. Then the fourth question. The person asked, tell me, akhbirni anis sa'a, tell me when is the day of judgment? And the Prophet said, neither you nor me know about that day. This knowledge is with Allah. When is the day of judgment? So the, the person said, tell me about the signs. Tell me about the signs of the day of judgment. And the Prophet mentioned two categories of signs. Uh, one is that the slave woman will give birth to her mistress, her, her, her leader, like a master. Uh, that slave person uh, gives birth to the child of her slave master so that, that the baby, the child, is now the child of the slave master and therefore the leader of the, the mother. And secondly, you will see people, you know, Bedouin competing with each other in, in building uh, lofty buildings, high-rise buildings and so on. So, the, the signs now that the Prophet Alisson mentioned, this is at the very core of fiqh at tahawala the fiqh of transitions. The first one, about the slave woman giving birth to her mistress represents uh, 
a total immersion or a total change or a total reversal of values in society. And the second sign, the category of which is the failure of governance in society. The, the failure of governance meaning the governance or government no longer do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. The government uh, elected by the people is supposed to take care of the people. And so the, the prophet said that, that a time will come and that will no longer happen. So the changes of value in society that a slave woman will give birth to her mistress. Uh, that's the indicator of this is a total change of values in society. And one of the things that you must understand is there are two types of societies from an Islamic perspective. One is the Islamic society and the other one is the Jahili society. The Jahili society is a society which is based on ignorance or non-acceptance of divine values. The Islamic society is based on belief in and acceptance of divine authority in society. What we mean by divine authority is that society is committed to following the rules, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two types or categories of societies from an Islamic perspective, either an Islamic society or a Jahili society. And there is an underlining rule of thumb for the Jahili society. In the Jahili society, halal becomes haram, and haram becomes halal. That, by definition, is your Jahili society. In an Islamic society, halal is halal and haram is haram. So it's important that we recognize this because then you would uh, clear all the hurdles in front of you to recognize what type of society you're looking at. So I'm saying that in a Jahili society, haram Things which are haram becomes halal, and things which are halal becomes haram. So I want you to give an example now. In a Jahili society, give an example of something which is halal in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but is considered haram in that society. Or something which is haram in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and considered halal in that society. So give me an example. Raise your hands and let me know. Let me hear. It should be an easy one. Think about uh, what happened in this society. Yes. Huh? Adultery. Yeah, it, in, in, in Islam it's, it's haram, but in many societies it's okay. It's encouraged. It's protected by the law and so on and so forth. That's one thing. What else? Human alcohol. Drinking alcohol. That's what you said? Yes. Yeah. Well, sure. In Islam, consuming alcohol is haram. Right? But in, 
in many societies it's halal. It's protected. People can do that. No one can tell you anything. And so on and so forth. So you understand now, you know, this concept of the value system in a society. So the first category is about this. And then the second category about people competing in constructing lofty buildings and the people are mentioned in the, in the hadith as uh, Bedouin. You know, they uh, for competing to, with each other to build lofty high-rise buildings. Where, where does a Bedouin usually live? Can you tell me? In a desert, in a tent? Yes, that by definition is a Bedouin. Living in a desert, living in a tent. So they don't have any permanent home. You know, if they find an oasis with water, that's where they pitch their tent, live there for six months, a year. When the water is finished, they go looking for another oasis and so on. They're, they're like this. So it's, it's not a, a physical statement, it's a figurative statement. And what it means is the collapse of governance, of true governance in society. And you see it today, all the time. I mean, the Prophet Ali Sallallahu mentioned so many things. You know, right now, uh, the situation in Sudan is uh, unbelievable. If you know Sudan, you know Sudanese, and so on. They, they've all, for all these centuries, they've been a peaceful people. They're loving, they're kind. They live with one another like brothers and sisters. That's always been a Sudanese society for centuries. And now, this past couple of weeks, they've been killing one another. You know, two groups. I'm not sure if, if it's in news here in Trinidad, but this is what's happening. It's unbelievable that they can go to this level. And the people are killing one another, Sudanese killing fellow Sudanese uh, because of power and they want government and to control the government and so on. So a failure of governance, whatever the outcomes are. So this fic of transition now tells us about these things and what will happen. Now, I want to talk about the benefit of knowing, having knowledge of fiqh of transitions. The Prophet Ali Islam mentioned about different stages in society and what will happen. He mentions, for example, that among the signs of changes in society, uh, is that people will commit murder. Murder will become frequent. Is this happening in Trinidad society now? You have an increase in that? Yeah. Hmm? Record levels. Record levels. Uh, more than before. You know? And then, uh, are, are people concerned about this? Concerned about your safety in Trinidad? Should be, because if your record levels of murders and killing and so on, you have to be careful. You know, sometimes people may not want to go out because of this, and so on. And the Prophet Ali Sallallahu says that it would not get better. It would only get worse. Yeah. So when you hear this now, it affects you. You you think about this and about what is happening in society. If you have children, grandchildren, you're concerned about it. 
What kind of world will they grow up in? You must be concerned about this. The Prophet Ali mentioned that there would be an increase of climate related natural disasters like flooding and wildfires and so on. In fact, people. You know, earlier this year, uh, before Ramadan, uh, in California, and this was uh, quite a lot in the news in North America because it was alarming. In California, uh, they were flooding in different parts of the state of California, affecting many people. People had to leave their homes and so on. At the same time, in California, the same state, there were drought and wildfires at the same time. So in some places there's flooding, in other places there's fire, affecting thousands of people, having to evacuate from their home and so on, loss of property, life, livestock, and so on. So, you know, people were amazed by this incredible thing. Even people in California were saying they'd never witnessed this in their life. That at the same time, you have these extreme conditions taking place, affecting people. Yeah. So the Prophet Ali Sallallahu mentioned this. I mean, signs of transitions in society, changes in society, and uh, how it is connected to the final hour. So, if, if you, you know of this, then it, it affects you. And then the Prophet Ali Sallallahu mentioned about the Dajjal. That from among the major signs is the appearance of the Dajjal. And the Dajjal would be given so much power that they can kill people and they would kill a lot of people and they can bring people back to life and they would cause uh, rainfall in places where there have been drought and so on and so forth and people will follow the Dajjal because they see the power of the Dajjal or alleged power of the Dajjal and some people some believers will give up their Islam and follow the Dajjal And it would be a great fitna. And the Prophet Ali Salaam talked about that. A great fitna, tribulation, and misleading tribulation. So when you hear these things, it, uh, it can put you in a state of depression. You know, all these dangerous things will happen. Uh, affecting us, affecting our lives, affecting our Islam, affecting our family, our loved ones. It, it must affect us. But then, in this thick of transition now, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned how to protect ourselves. How to protect ourselves from all of these things. You know, for example, the Dajjal. Prophet Ali says, recite Surah Al-Kahf. Recite Surah Al-Kahf every Friday. And it will protect you for the next week until the next Friday. Next Friday, recite Surah Al-Kahf. Protect you for another week. So you keep doing that on Fridays, Surah Al-Kahf. And recite uh, the first ten verses, last ten verses for different types of protection. Uh, among the protection is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with a nur, a light from that Friday until the next Friday. That protects you and show you that nur shows you the way forward. What you should do. So the Prophet Ali 
in all of these instances mention the means of protection, the means of protection from these transitions in society. So you don't have to be overwhelmed by it. You don't have to go into a state of depression and worries and anxieties because of these things that are happening in society. Because the Prophet shows us the way to protect ourselves. And so fiqh of transitions deal with this, showing us the way forward, what we should do. And so uh, I'll go towards the conclusion of uh, my presentation tonight. Uh, okay, we dealt with all of these things uh, so far. Continue. Continue. And so we have different uh, levels of fiqh for this fiqh of transitions. Fiqh at tahawlat and then there's the fiqh and nawaqid, fiqh and naqa'id, fiqh mudullat al fitan, fiqh asbab al wiqaya, fiqh al isharat, fiqh al bisharat, fiqh al nazarat, fiqh al hasanat, ashrat al kawniya, fiqh al malahim. Different aspects. So, th this field now, this uh, new Islamic science of fiqh tahawlat, it, it's critical for us to know because we can identify the challenges we are faced with in society and prepare ourselves to deal with it. That we would not be influenced by what is happening in society. You know, uh, one of the things that I'm sure you're aware of, it's uh, this crisis of identity in human society. And the people that are promoting this, they're aggressive in implementing these values in society. Before I came out to Trinidad, I was in Guyana for a series of lectures. And the brothers and sisters are telling me that it's happening a lot there in, in the school system. This crisis of values, specifically with identity. Uh, they have their system and they're aggressively promoting it to everyone in society and teaching the children in schools about these things, trying to influence them. You know? They're doing their dawah. Their dawah to shaitan. And we have to do our dawah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The problem is Muslims uh, are not engaging in this dawah. Inviting people to our way, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And this is what we need to do. And this is the essential uh, requirement and the essential responsibility of each and every Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ started with this. You know, from the get-go, beginning in Mecca, he received revelation. He was the Prophet of Allah. And from then he started inviting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everyone that joined him in those early days in Mecca, all the Sahabas, they accepted Islam and then they started to invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it continued. And this is what we need to do. To engage in this da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa in, in, Invite people to our way. To the way of the Prophet sallallahu Because the other people, they're inviting to their way. You know, one day they get up and they say, I'm a man. And the next day, they get up and say, I'm a woman. And, you know, you have to accept it. Because uh, what they're doing also, like in Canada and US, 
they are entrenching these values in the legal system that it become a law you can't tell anyone anything you know it's, it's scary imagine you have to you have your young child and they have to go to that uh, school and learn those values and they will our, our children our young generation will be influenced by this if they keep hearing it all the time they'll accept it after a while you know, you, you ask a typical Christian, uh, is Jesus the Son of God? And many of them will say yes. Because that's, that, that's the lie they were told often enough that they now believe in it. Allah Surah Al Ikhlas refutes that. Allah Allahu Samad. Lam yalid wa lam yula. No. He doesn't have any children doesn't have any parents but the average Christian was, would accept that Jesus is the son of God Jesus is God in the Trinity that's what they believe in and so on so if we do nothing uh, these pagan evil values will spread in society yes and it would engulf us if not us, our children or their children. So we have to engage in da'wah. Invite everyone we know to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that they can, you know, the people who are invited and, and respond, they can know about the true Islamic values in this fiqh of transition. And so we, we have an action plan that I've been promoting uh, wherever I go. Uh, one of which uh, includes uh, reciting the Weird Alarm Vicar. The Weird Alarm Vicar, it's uh, the foundational vicar of the spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it consists of three components which are the pillars of the journey to Allah. Istighfar, Salawat, and Tahleel. Istighfar meaning to recite Astaghfirullah, Salawat, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Tahleel, La ilaha illallah. To recite it 100 times in the morning, 100 times in the evening. You know, that's your starting point. You prepare yourself to embark on this journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then to join the vehicle that takes you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we call the tariqah. Tariqah is a spiritual network. And so you start reciting the Virulam every day, then you join the tariqah, and we continue with that spiritual training when you are on the tariqah, the spiritual network. Uh, and then the way to enter into the tariqa is that you take the bayah, which is uh, a promise to recite the Weed Alam. It's very simple. Recite the Weed Alam every day. That's your starting point. But it has great blessings for you and great protection for you from the transitions in society, the challenges in society. To take the bayah and join our tariqa, which is a shahadat tariqa that we offer a spiritual training in. And then fourthly, join the Dawah Network. Uh, the simple steps that you can do to influence other people to be on this path, traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then uh, I have a daily live stream broadcast uh, every day from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, where we would do additional training. Uh, you get a chance to be in constant contact with me. Uh, through, it's done on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Faisal slash live. But it's an opportunity to have access to me every day. Any questions you have, uh, 
and so on. We deal with that and additional instructions for everyone. And the final point of this action plan is uh, for each one of you to persist in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't uh, forget the power of dua. Always connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there are many problems people may be faced with and challenges. So turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make much dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep us safe and protect us. Uh, and uh, help us to deal with all of these challenges in society. Uh, so this is the action plan, inshallah. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you. Inshallah. I want to conclude our session with... Uh, I want to give you the ijazah to recite the real alarm. Inshallah, we'll do that now. Alhamdulillah. So, if, if I can have this microphone over here, Inshallah. We're coming to the end of uh, my presentation. Uh, so, I, I mentioned the real alarm they care. Uh, which I want to encourage you to recite. And as I said, this is the foundational dhikr of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it consists of three pillars of the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we have uh, Maulana Tariq. Can you stand up, please? Maulana Tariq. Uh, he's our representative in Trinidad. So you can contact him to get copies of the Read Alam dhikr. Uh, or also our dear respected Haji Nizam um, who can give you this information as well because he's in regular contact with Maulan Tariq. Uh, I also want to introduce, uh, you can sit down, Shukran Sidi, Sidi Naim, uh, who is from the United States. Uh, we thank him for coming and being here with us. Sidi uh, Mustafa, can you stand up, please? Uh, Sidi Mustafa is our lead uh, murid in Suriname. He is uh, in charge of our Tariqa, the EFF Suriname, alhamdulillah. And uh, we have also Siti Sharon over here. Please stand up so the sisters can see you. And uh, Siti Sharon is the responsible for the sisters' activity of the Tariqa, EFF Guyana, inshallah. We thank them for coming and being with us. Inshallah. So, for the Ithan or permission to recite the Ridalam Dikir, I'll, I'll recite it. The instructions in Arabic for you, Inshallah. So, you listen to that, and then as of tonight, tomorrow, you can recite it. It's also on my website, uh, sheikhfaisal.com. In the Dikir section, there is the Weird Alam, the first dhikr. Uh, there's also an audio recording of the dhikr there. Uh, a PDF file, you can print out the dhikr, inshallah. Uh, and uh, if you need a copy, please uh, consult Maulana Tariq. Uh, you can contact him tonight before, at the end of the program, inshallah. Okay, we do the uh, ijaza for the real and the kill. Audi Bilahim in a shaitan regime, Smilahi Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Was salat to was salam or Allah Zayyidina Muhammadin or Allah Ali, he was happy here, Jemaine. La ilaha ilan to Subhanaka in a condamina dolimin. In a ladina you bay on a ka in a ma you bay on a law. يد الله فوق أيديهم فمن نكث فإنما ينكث على نفسه ومن أوفى بما أعهد عليه الله فسيؤتيه أجرا عظيما يقول المريد سباحا ومساء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم مرة واحدة ثم يقول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
ثلاث مرات ثم يقرا قوله تعالى وما تقدمون لانفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا واعظم اجرا استغفر الله ان الله غفور رحيم ثم يقول استغفر الله تسنة السنة مرة وتمام المئة يقول أستغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأتوب إليه ثم يقرأ قوله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ثم يقول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر أذمد ذلك في كل وقت وحين ثم يقرأ قوله تعالى فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله ثم يقول لا إله إلا الله تسنة تسن مرة وتمام مية يقول لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم يقرأ قوله تعالى فعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله ثم يقول لا إله إلا الله تسنة تسن مرة وتمام مية يقول لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ثم يدعو لنفسه ولأباه ولشيخه ولنفسه ولأبويه ولجميع خالي الصوفية وللمسلمين أجمعين اللهم تقبل منا هذا اللهم بارك لنا في عبد الله لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله and I would like you to recite the talqi now. I would recite La ilaha illallah in a certain way, elongation of force Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We do it three times. Listen to me and recite that for me, inshallah. In, in an audible voice, loud voice, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. La ilaha illallah. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله اللهم تقبل منا هذه الويا اللهم تقبل منا هذه الويا اللهم تقبل منا هذه الدنيا وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين so uh, this is the action plan and i hope you can all join this action plan and together we can travel on this journey to Allah سبحانه وتعالى الحمد لله and uh, we can go to any concluding remarks now, inshallah. Shukran, shukran. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless our dear Sheikh, Sayyidina Sheikh, and Alhamdulillah Raza for those uh, explaining uh, this insight to this new science of fiqh for all of us, inshallah. There are more to learn, inshallah. So, as he mentioned to us, we should try to take some of the action plans and implement it in our life. I've been his students for more than 20 years. The, the same will I'm zikr. And I've seen a lot of changes in my life in connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, this can happen to you also. You know, is, is, you have to be steadfast in becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are steadfast in the other things of the dunya, as our Sheikh mentioned. And we still want the help of Allah, so inshallah, by doing these steps, it will help you to become close to Allah, physically and spiritually to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also increasing our muhabba for the Gulam Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, for closer remarks, I will ask our dear Haji Nisan Bash to say a few words, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. On behalf of all of us, 
I would like to take this opportunity here to thank the Sheikh for sharing that knowledge to us here this evening. As we listen to it, it appears so simple for us that we could implement in our lives and to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a better form. So I want to thank him and his group that accompanied him here this evening and for the lectures they have been doing throughout Trinidad. I think it's a marvelous um, session for us. Uh, when you look at the action plan, they're very simple and we could implement this in our lives and keep improving our spiritual side of us. And this is important. This is what we need so that we could get nearer and nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when that day of judgment comes, that we will be fully prepared. And this is here we can do that. Only in this life we could prepare ourselves for the year after. So, Sheikh, thank you very much uh, for visiting us here again in Trinidad and for sharing this knowledge in this simple way for us to understand. And I hope, my brothers and sisters, we could start to implement this ASAP as from tonight, inshallah. Right? Um, I will try to get some of the things that so we could print it and share it with you so that we could have some sessions as well in putting those things into effect. So, Sheikh, thank you again, and may Allah bless you and continue in this direction and uh, giving that kind of leadership to people all over the, the world, inshallah. So thank all of you, those who are accompanying him, and thank the brothers and sisters who joined us here tonight, inshallah. And let us, when we return home, do that we could feel a difference in our lives and that we want to focus a little more uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all his action plan that has been they've given to us tonight. Assalamu alaikum and may Allah bless us all inshallah. Shukran for the uh, Haji Nizam Bash. I know he's a hard worker in the Muslim community. May Allah bless him and his entire family and also bless the BIC for co-sponsoring this uh, program here at the, this facility also. We thank him and all the entire team inshallah. On behalf of the AFF uh, and also the Super Academy, the BIC and the Islamic Trust and the Moshe of Nuru, we like to thank everyone for coming out and spending this time with us, inshallah. And may Allah bless you and your family and take care of all your needs, inshallah. So we raise our hands and hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept all we have done this evening, that we will keep us all in the straight path of Salat al Mustaqim. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تشفينا وسلم عليه وسلم يداوينا وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ربنا عتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة قنا طاب النار اللهم صل على سيدنا ذيك عصرك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر أذمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين Subhanahu wa bika zati ma yisafuhum wa salam ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar La ilaha ila Allah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ameen Inshallah after the Isha Salat those who uh, you can come back here we have refreshments for everyone you can partake and also those who want to interact with the Shaykh to ask him any questions you can do so also Inshallah uh, so again, thank everyone and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.